and today we're going to proceed with the building of the first of two FEs this year. Hopefully two FEs this year. We're still waiting on parts for the other one. This is the 390 that's going into the little hot rod truck and we'll do something tell you about the little truck later but we're starting here get the cam in get the crank in and move on from there so I got somebody helping me today it's actually the guy that owns the motor and he's already cleaned the cam and in case you're wondering what I'm doing we're trying not to make too much of a mess here in his shop so I'm just gonna lube everything up right here inside the engine which is already cleaned and that's where it's gonna land anyway is go ahead and goop this cam up real good without making too much of a mess and I should probably have some rubber gloves on doing this but I'm going to take the scientific approach and get this thing good and coat it And the last thing I'm going to do before this cam slides into this block past it is lube these ones up. Okay, so when you sit the cam in, you don't want to just drop it in and bang on the bearings. You want to kind of try to guide it in. With some motors it's easier than others. On these old big block Fords it's pretty easy. And we have the little cam install handle down here. This is a nice fancy store-bought one. Mine's a couple of old manifold bolts welded together. There you go. Okay, so we've got everything lubed up, but the part of the cam that's right here between these two cylinders. We're going to slide it in, and the last thing I'm going to do before those pass into the block is lube them up. And then after I get it in there, I'm going to come back and put another little dollop on top of each cam lobe. And what that does is prepare it for when you stick it back in later, drop your lifters in, it's not running on dry cam. So you bring it on in, and the trick is not to let the lobes drag the cam bearings. And this isn't as tough as it looks. You just got to take your time and once you do it once or twice, it works pretty good. I usually keep them up on the table to do this kind of stuff, but this one was already on the stand, so we're going to leave it there, save her back, not have to pick up so much heavy stuff. And now the cam is in place. And then what I usually do, I know usually I always do it, I go ahead and give it a good turn turn it in both directions. Now that assembly lube is sticky and it's cold today so it's going to feel a little hard to turn but it's not really that bad. So here's a point of interest. This is a Baron. Now this is a brand new lower main Baron out of the box. And as you can see it's a little grubby looking. Well this is a tri-plated performance Baron and this is how they look. And they got a little thin layer. If you notice, it's kind of gold looking. It's got a little thin layer of copper over top of it. And when you get a new engine or you get a new car and they tell you to drive it for 500 miles and change the oil, to break it in, this is the break in stuff. When you pull this out later, it'll be nice and silver, you know, unless you have a catastrophic failure or some trash runs through it or something. So I thought I'd just show you that because some people are put off by it when they first get an engine building or the first time they're doing it, you know, at home on their own. They open the box up and they think, oh my God, I got used bearings. Well, this is what they're supposed to look like. So as long as it's even and clean, and you see I got a rag in my hand, I always clean my bearings, even new ones, before the first time I put them in the engine. So we're back on FE build number one for the year. Tonight we're going to get the crank in it, rear seal. Everything's cleaned in that little montage video that I made. This is the cap we were milling on. I had to mill this main cap down an extra 265 thousandths to make room for the nuts on the ARP main stud kit. But now that that's out of the way, we can go ahead and move forward and get the crank in it. This is the rear main seal. The instructions are on the bag. If you're an experienced engine builder, you know to read them. If you're new to it, you know to read them. But rather or not, 
you're experienced or not, always read them because from time to time, the silicone changes, the rubber compounds change, the rules change a little bit. And it's that 1% that changed that you didn't know about that'll cause your leak. So just read them careful before you put them in. Make sure you got everything in your favor. So the next step is get your top of your mains in. And it's pretty self-explanatory on these. The tang won't let it go in but one way. And the uh, oil and groove goes in the top. The bottoms don't have an oil hole in them. They uh, do have, I can't remember on this one if they do or not. Yeah. These are what's called three-quarter groove bearings. They have a little bit of oil and groove into the bottom piece. That gives you more oil capacity in the bearing to help float your crank. And on these old big heavy cranks, that's always a plus. So the thrust bearing is the middle bearing on this engine. And there's a notch cut in here. And I'll see if I can't uh, get a little better shot of that. But that's where the ones with the sides on it goes. This is what keeps your crank from walking back and forth. Is your thrust bearing and this is it. That's what these little oil and grooves here are for is they get splashed and as oil runs over it gets in here and spins around as the crank's going around so you got oil on all your moving surfaces or all your contact surfaces and I need to get in the picture a little better. Now I'm too far out of the picture. That's better. <laughs> there you go. We, I've already cleaned the surfaces. Everything's all nice and ready to go. So let's get started. That thrust bearing goes in a little tight sometimes. You don't want to hit it. You want to walk it in. And there it goes. And then you just got to lay one shell. And see, the regular shells don't have any sides on them. They're just a thin bearing because they're not thrust bearings. And as you can see, the slide in the bearing lines up with the hole. And when your oil comes up, on this motor it oils the cam first and the oil runs down to the main bearing because this is a center oiler. So here's the cap to the thrust bearing. I figured this would be a little bit better way for you all to see it in case you haven't done one of these before. It's got a groove machined in it. It's not very deep. It's just a shoulder. It's not really a groove. It's just a shoulder. And that's what the edge of this bearing rides in. Now here's your tang. And then here's the tang on your bearing. So you line that up. And then you just kind of squeeze it in. And as you can see, it doesn't go all the way to the shoulder. So now this is ready. Oh, and here's the three-quarter groove part. You get a little bit of groove on either side of the bearing to carry the oil around, where we got a full semicircle down there. So we give it a good shot of lube. I really ought to be wearing rubber gloves doing this, but trying to work the camera and wear rubber gloves and do this too gets to be a bit fun and I'm making it get blurry because I'm moving too much too close but now this is ready so we'll set this over on the bench and next up is the crank now you want to be real careful going in with the crank And there we go. The crank is in. 